Hey guys, it's been a while since I did one of these episodes of this series, which I call Wireshark Them All, which I pick a software protocol back in, and then I run Wireshark and see how things work, and, and kind of debug and diagnose, and, and, and kind of question and assert why things look the way they look. Today, I'm going to Wireshark Node.js, and specifically, I'm going to Wireshark the HTTP protocol Node.js system. How, how about we go through the code? Do a curl on the request on the back end and then do a Wireshark, which is giving you more details. Let's jump into it. So I'm importing from HTTP and I'm going creating a request listener. And upon any request, this function will be executed. And I, ha I imported this uh, press any key. It just waits for me to press something to, to move to the next line. And the reason is because I don't want to do a debugging because debugging kind of messes up with Wireshark, with Node.js, and then uh, the event loop gets really weird when that situation. So I just want to run the application as is and just press keys to move to the next, next uh, line. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the headers, which is very simple content type, and then... I'm gonna ask the question to flush the headers, and you might say, Hussein, what, why are we flushing the headers? I never do that. I'm gonna explain all about that, and what's the difference, what's the benefits between flushing the headers versus never flushing the headers, all that stuff, we'll go through that. And then uh, I'm gonna write my first body in the content, which is uh, wrote one, <laughs> very simple. I'm gonna ask before it, and then wrote two, wrote three, and then finally, I'm gonna end the response by writing the final byte. This will tell curl that, hey, all the chunks, all the content has been received. This is the end of the response. How about we jump into it and, and run this stuff? All right, hopefully you can see. This is the terminal. I'm going to go ahead and run node index.mjs, Mike Jackson. Now I have a web server listening, right? And then I'm going to do a curl dash v and i'm gonna do an n which is no buffering that means anything that curl receives from the server i want it to display immediately right and then http localhost it it and let's hit enter and then when i do that i'm getting a message here it says hey do you want to write the header go ahead and write the header see header uh, curl received nothing now we're at this stage we just wrote the header and we're stuck right here right flushing the headers Okay, so now I'm about to flush the headers and ask me a question. Should, do you want to flush the headers? That means, do you want to write to the TCP socket in the HTTP protocol down that so, so the curl receives it, the client receives it? Yep, I'm going to, the moment I hit enter, we get back the beautiful headers, which is HTTP 11, 200, okay, which is the, whatever I specified right here, right? And you might, you, might, you might do this in one click and you might use, and instead you might use set headers. It's all the same. Okay, then I'm gonna write my first chunk, right? Now I'm actually the, writing the body, and you can see that we got it here. And then I'm gonna write another one, DJ Khaled, row two, and then another one, DJ Khaled, write three, and then boom, the none. Curl, since curl is, is a single, like it, it's a command line, the, the moment it receives the response, it does a job, it did its job, so it's gonna terminate, and then it terminates the connection and, and that's it, closed it. So now we're, we're done, we closed the connection. Let's go and, and do the Wireshark on what we just did. Okay, I'm gonna clear everything here and uh, I'm, the whole thing is in, in the same local host. So what we're gonna do is, uh, and you can stop this, you can do it this way, right? Click on select loopback, click start, and then, so you can, you're gonna get a lot of garbage. To filter that you can do TCP, the port equal 8080. When you do that, only, which is the port I listen to, only things that goes to port 8080 will be displayed here. How about we do the same thing again? Kill it, run it. Now it's running. Again, nothing happened because nobody connected to port 8080. Let's fire up curl and we're gonna forget about it right now. We don't care about curl now. Let's go through what happened here. Curl did the following. It sends a sen, senac, an ack. This is the TCP handshake we know about. I talked about that. Check it out right here. Send so senac, ack, right? And then uh, the server sends a Windows update. A window, Windows update. 
<laughs> Windows 10 update, yeah, <laughs> 76 megabyte. It just updated the TCP window for flow control. And then the client, which is curl, sends the get request, which is that what we do, right? When we send uh, any uh, request in HTTP, get request, read. And then the server responds with ACK, and that's it. We didn't do anything else. So now, it's asked me to write the header. When I do write headers, see, in Wireshark, there's nothing going on. Literally nothing, right? But when I flush the header, boom, you can immediately see a push from the server 8080 to the client saying that, hey, this is the garbage. This is the headers that we just saw, right? And now the client responded, hey, got it, acknowledged. We, we know about all that stuff. Now I'm going to write my first chunk. You can see that, hey, this is just Wireshark reassembling stuff, but we, hey, we got a, a new packet, write one. And if I send it again, you get another packet and an acknowledgement every time. Every packet you send from the server sends, the client acknowledge and vice versa. That's just all the sequencing that we do. TCP is a very stateful protocol. I got all these numbers of sequence. Hit it again. And then finally, the final one, right end. And then that ends it. But uh, that ends the write, right, with a new line. I believe that's how HTTP 1 ends the write. HTTP 2 is a complete different beast, obviously. But the client acknowledges. Now, the client, which is curl, terminates the uh, closes, the app closes, and it does a fin act, which is a request to close the connection, the server responds with an ACK, then, and uh, the, the server closes its fin ACK, and then ACK, and that's it. That's how the connection cleanly closed. Now, let's go back to why we were going to flush the headers. Now, this is, this is very important for you guys, uh, back-end engineering and front-end as well. So, if I didn't flush the header, right, look, what, what is going to happen? You might say, Hussein, I, I never flush my headers. What's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen, but see the difference. Let's see the difference if I don't flush the headers. Do it. All that, all that jazz, nothing fancy, right? Right header, right? Nothing happened because we just wrote it. But if you don't flush the header, the headers will be flushed with the first right in the body. Okay, so when I write the first chunk, you will see that the headers are sent with the write, right? And you might say, Jose, this is awesome, right? Why do we want to send headers in separately than the body itself, right? We just saved an extra packet by sending them combined. And this might sound great, and it really depends on the, your use case. Here's one use case. You might, if the headers are very critical for, for the front end, right? The front end can make very important decisions by reading those headers, despite you as a back end engineer never providing the body itself. Why? Because the body usually takes time to compute. You're going to query a database, you're going to query some cache, you're going to build some structures. To build the body, it takes time. I'm building a stupid app right here. But usually to write this first buy, it takes time. Most of the time, it takes time. I'm going to explain what the what TCP keep alive in a minute right now. Hopefully, I, I remember. So it takes time to do that. So if you're not flushing the header, you are depriving the client from this beautiful metadata, which you have, which has nothing to do with the body. You already have this content ready to be sent. Content and for content type, sniffing information, x sniff, uh, content length, all this information. Some of them do not depend on computation, or if they depend on the computation, they are very minor computation on the body itself, right? So you can send this and flush the headers before and then go do your query and then compute your body and then write it, right? If you don't do that, then the, the worst thing that can happen, the client just waited for you write whatever X amount of time to get the headers, which is, it's kind of, it, it, it kills the user experience, if you think of it. So if you can flush the header, 
flush them early as possible, right? Sometimes, uh, can you do this all the time? Obviously, no, not, not every time. Uh, sometimes the headers are just, there's no way, or, or, or the body is just cached, and then it doesn't make sense to flush the header separately than the body. It's just might as well just flush them together. All right, so let's talk about this TCP <laughs> Keep Alive. We got two of them, right? So what curl do, by the way, curl's still running. Why? Because I didn't, I didn't even write the second chunk, so curl is still running. So, what curl does, there's a configuration called keep alive, TCP keep alive. And it sends this packet, right, to the server, and the server immediately responds with, hey, TCP keep alive, ACK. The reason we do this is because TCP is a stateful protocol, there are middle boxes, NAT boxes, routers, especially your Wi-Fi router, that keeps track of these sequence numbers for a given IP address, for a given port, for a given TCP full stateful connection, right? It keeps track of them. And uh, I don't know for a reason for validity, for things like that, right? It keeps track of these things. And some boxes in the middle say, hey, you know what? There wasn't any activity for this amount of time. So let's just save some time and just kill this. this uh, let's just drop any knowledge about this particular connection which could be dangerous because the, the other parties that you and the server might still are running, right? The client is running and the server running, but you are you guys are not communicating, right? So the, the boxes in the middle decided just to drop any knowledge about you. Okay, and I talk about that NAT. Check out the NAT video, guys, if you know, learn, learn more about what routers store about TCP connections, right? So TCP keep alive is essentially just an indication that, hey, by the way, I'm alive. So that tells anything in the middle to say, okay, we're going to keep you alive. We're going to keep you a little bit longer, right? And you can configure this. By the way, this, this is by default 60 seconds. And you can change it to anything you want with curl dash dash tcp keep alive i believe right because it gets chatty right if there's 60 seconds if you're sending these packets and network engineer love this stuff right network engineer says like you know what why are you sending all this stupid keep keep alive messages right don't be chatty network engineers don't don't like to be chatty all right guys that was a quick video talking about wire shocking node.js uh, http headers flushing the headers all that stuff uh i'm gonna see you in the next one very quick video thank you so much love you goodbye